Solving the unsolved new DNA technology in our neck of the woods is delivering answers in cold cases some decades old. Othram, a forensics lab in the woodlands, is looking to bring justice to all families impacted by murder. Killed in cold blood, the only thing more upsetting is a case going cold. Currently, there are more than 330,000 unsolved murders in the U.S., according to the FBI's Uniform Crime Report data. How many cold cases does HPD have? Uh, just over 6,000 cold cases. Richard Rodriguez is a sergeant with Houston Police Department. He heads the agency's cold case division. When cases come here, you have to think outside the box um, and outside of traditional uh, uh, methods and traditional means. And that's why now we started using uh, forensic gene genealogy. Doing all this, this testing is, is very expensive. And yes, we have our own lab. But for the cases that we work, for cold cases, we, we need the latest and greatest. And typically government labs don't have the latest and greatest. And so we have to go to these outside, outside labs, these private labs. We have taken the most advanced genomic technologies. We've adopted them for forensic use within a forensic process. Authorum is a private lab, the first of its kind in the world, that was purposefully built to identify perpetrators or victims from crime scenes. If I touch Michael's shoulder, I have left hundreds of cells. Authorum has solved cases with just 15 cells. That's 0.1 nanograms of DNA. If someone knew that they would get caught if they left 15 cells, the equivalent of 15 human cells at a crime scene, I believe this technology one day will be used to bring justice to all cases and not just some cases. And it's hard to use the word justice if it only works sometimes. This justice is what the Ivy family has been searching and waiting for for almost 40 years. The day after Hurricane Alicia. So August 19th. 1983 was the darkest day in my life. The day that our mother was ripped away from all of us. Helen Ivy Maldonado and Sarah Ivy Edwards reflect on the day their mother, Frances Ivy, was murdered. The killings happened here in what was once called Shoemate and Company, a real estate office along Memorial Drive near Highway 6 in West Houston. Also killed her colleagues, Elizabeth Shoemate and Joanne Brown. She was last to be shot, so we know that she had to watch her friends be killed. Fran's girls say it was a hit, a targeted deadly robbery. I don't think the person that actually killed them did that on their own. Well, you know, we have the typical stuff with fingernail scraping, some rope that was that was used to bind the uh, the victims, ballistic evidence and stuff like that. So uh, there, there's some stuff that we can still use. Um, but again, it's already been tested. Uh, results just didn't come back all that great back then. Um, and it, now it's just a matter of, okay, when do we pull the trigger? Do we do it now or do we wait and let, and let this stuff get, get better? I do believe that most cases that have DNA that are sitting in a cold case can be resolved using this technology, whether they're current or from 46 years ago. If this does get solved, will you be there to see justice is served? Oh, not only Absolutely. yes, but hell yes. Mm -hmm. Hell yes. Right now, the evidence in Fran Ivey's case continues to sit in the cold case files at HPD. The family says they are interested in getting the case over to Othram. Right now, I want to bring Andy Kahn, president of Crime Stoppers Houston, into this conversation. Andy, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We do appreciate well, it. I, I do appreciate the promotion to president, but I'm the victim services director of Crime Stoppers. So. <laughs> but, but thanks, Doc. <laughs> we graduated you north, right? <laughs> uh, Don't well, tell well, my CEO. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do appreciate your time this morning. I know you're out of town, and so thank you very much for, uh, yeah. for joining us. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to uh, hear or, or watch the story that just aired, um, but you, this is a conversation that you and I have talked about uh, extensively within the past several months. What are your thoughts are on this technology? Well, first of all, working with uh, Helen and Sarah, when I first uh, contacted them several years ago, it's just been an outright joy. I mean, meeting up with them and putting their mother's case and the other two realtors' cases back on the map has been nothing less than a godsend for them for 25 years. Basically, they, uh, they were silent. No one got in touch with them until we reached out to them. So 
uh, they become true champions of this. My position has always been you exhaust all options, period. And if there's an option out there that needs to be looked at and checked into, then by gosh, you, you go and do it. It's, it's really that simplistic and it defies logic why we wouldn't do that. I can tell you from someone who has served on the board of parents of murdered children and surviving family members of homicide for over 30 years, that grief is intensified when justice is lacking. Mm. And right now for close to 40 years, and when you think about that, 40 years, justice has been lacking for Sarah, Helen, and for members of the other two families that still seek answers. And it's time that we get them some answers. And that is what they're hoping for as we approach that 40 year mark in August. Uh, how many cold cases does Crime Stoppers Houston oversee? <laughs> Oh God, I mean, if you go, we feature a case uh, every week we put out on, on our social media to catch a killer. We work with families going all the way back into the 70s and the 80s. And I tell families, and this is from experience working with surviving family members of homicide, I, I have seen miracles happen. And the way miracles happen though, is you got to dig in your heels and you got to ask for that miracle to happen. It's not going to happen by itself. So you've got to really start pushing. And that's one of the reasons I really like working with Sarah and Helen is they're never going to give up. And even though it's now been 40 years, they're still on the case. And so now you've got new technology and we've seen this technology open up and close cases throughout the country and hoping and praying to God that this triple realtor murder that still remains unsolved for over 40 years will also finally get some resolution. It's, it's really bothersome to me that a case like this in which you have three realtors working at a real estate firm in a, in a very nice part of town, that there's no denying that, could be murdered, slain, execution style at the end of a work day. And here we are 40 years later with still no answers. It's, it's really puzzling to me. Yeah, it is. It's very puzzling. And I know 40 years can do a lot to a family, but I know for this family, it is, uh, it has driven them to uh, search even harder for that resolution for those answers. I will always be here for them. I will yeah. always be advocating and I will always be championing for them. So like I said, you know, I, I see no problem, you know, trying things, doing things. The only thing that that can happen is you, you don't get an answer, but at least you made the effort and you made the, the resolution to try it. So, yeah, you know, all all hands on deck. Let's get this thing resolved. Well, we so much appreciate your time. We appreciate what you do for this community and especially uh, what you're doing right now for uh, Sarah and Helen. I know they appreciate it and I appreciate always working with you uh, to help bring support and comfort to those well, impacted. Let's hope that a segment like this prompts every, everybody to come together and realize that we're all here trying to solve this case. And yeah. it, it, whatever little things that might be going on to prevent point A from point B from happening. Let's just all get on the same plate right now. You know, I think you said it really well too, and that's not to point fingers, it's to bring people together, whether you're a law enforcement officer, whether you're a loved one to a victim of murder, or even a politician. It, it is time to come together and, and look at technology that can really bring answers and closure to families who have been searching for so long. That's all that matters, period. There's nothing else matters. Personalities, differences, techniques, it's irrelevant right now. Let's just get the answers. Andy, thank you very much, sir. Again, you I can. appreciate it, we appreciate it, and we will talk to you soon.